hello peeps and welcome to my channel so today I am going to draw and paint two gorgeous little budgies they are lovely little birds that live here in Australia and they come in multiple colors like blues and reds and purples and all kinds of lovely colors so I'm going to start by drawing their basic outlines in I've got sort of oval heads and I'm just working from a reference off Unsplash which is a royalty free reference site so they've got a little collar around there oops that would be my bear bear barking excuse my little dog sitting under my desk having a bark <laughs> okay so this little budgie is sitting and he's got his wing a little bit open on that side oops, excuse me bear bear my little doggy you need to shush all right, so come around, down, around his little body. He's got, I can only see two claws at the front. You've got to be very careful when you're looking at the anatomy of animals that you get your proportions and details as simple as how many toes do they have? <laughs> because some birds have different amounts of toes. Um, so I'm going to pop. I have no idea what my doggies are barking at, so excuse them. <laughs> So he's got a couple little feathers coming down there. And this one is uh, green and yellow. This little guy. I'll pop his little beak on there. Like that. And I can just see eye there. I've got to widen his head a little bit. I haven't quite widened it enough. There we go. He's got a yellowish beak. He's got blue. He's got little dots here that come around his little collar of his neck. There we go. So that's one budgie drawn in. I'll just make his head a little bit larger there. I've got a kneadable eraser which is really handy. These are lovely soft erasers and you can blot out pencil lines and not damage your paper at all. Hello AK, how are you? How are you? How are you? So that's little Mr. One Budgie done and then we're going to do this one here. How are you doll? <laughs> What's been happening? Okay this little guy has got an interesting shaped head. These are both little boy ones. They've got little blue I'll just do, I can draw his beak on first. So what have you been up to, Dale? I haven't caught up with you in ages. Okay, pop his little, head, his little eye there. I've got to make his head bigger. I always adjust things backwards and forwards. The heads are about the same size. And you can see this is you can see just the back of this one. Got to make his neck a bit more of an angle there. His wings tucked out a little bit. Actually, maybe I need to drop that down a little bit. There we go. I can adjust and readjust as I go. Adjust and readjust. I've got to give him his little wings there. That, that one crosses over that one. He's got his little leg. His tail comes down here. And you can see his under feathers there. Like that. And his tail's a fraction longer. Like that. I'll draw the back of his little foot. I'm doing well. It's been a while since I caught an art stream since you moved over to YouTube. Yes! It's been ages. I haven't actually managed to... Um, this is the first week I've been able to stream in ages, if like for, at all. I've been so busy with farm and life and home and all the craziness that goes with life, <laughs> which is good. But yeah, I've been super busy. Um, I have done a few streams on Twitch in the last week, which has been good fun because I haven't been over there for a month. So... But yeah, I'm trying to do a little bit more on both. I'm trying to find a balance because I miss everyone. <laughs> I 
I need to find a better balance. Whoops. I've just got to erase that eye. So have you been streaming or what have you been up to, Dom? Yep. I've got to put his eye sort of a bit back a little bit like that. You can't see the bottom of his beak. He's got a pattern that comes down here. And then he's got the little bits that go around his collar. Like that. There we go. Okay. Now, he's got... That wing actually comes out a bit further. Come around here. Okay, so he's got his leg. I can see one of his little legs is there. His other little leg is there. And then he's got his longer feathers that come down his back. They are in a line. So my wire is tickling on my shirt. I need to move it. There we go. That's a bit better. It's annoying me. It's making a noise that's scrapey scrapey and I'm like no don't make scrapey scrapey noises okay so I'll pop just the basic pattern of his feathers in not much has changed still busy I've been on a terrible been a terrible stream it's been a month since stream same with me busy at work yes me too because we've been it's farm season here like all the grass is growing like crazy and the, we've got to have like been out on the tractor and doing lots of farm work recently so it'll start to slow down I've got this week off because it's um, wet and horrible. Can't do much when it's wet. So, but yeah, been crazy busy. So yeah, I haven't streamed in a month or so. I've only just started getting back to it now. So, get these feathers in. Now these feathers here go down like that and he's got I've got to get them sort of right like that okay so that's about it for that um, now and he's just got some stripes going down here down the back of his head I'll paint those in though keep it quite simple His tail comes down there. Righto. So I reckon they are pretty right. Like I think. So his head is twice his body and twice his tail. Head, twice body, twice tail. Okay, head, twice body, twice tail. So that's how I get proportions. It's been like three months. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're not slack, mate. Life happens. You've got to you've got to work. And sometimes, yeah, if different things take precedent. And you had COVID as well, didn't you? You were quite unwell for quite a while. You've got to take the pressure off, mate. Don't don't stress about it. You don't have to. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves to have to do everything, and you just can't. Okay, they're done. They're happy. I'm happy with those drawings. So what I'm going to do now is grab my brush, and I'm going to start by wetting my first budgie and I'm going to drop in some blue. I'll leave little snippets of white. I'm going to use cobalt blue. No, cerulean blue maybe? Cobalt blue. I don't know what colour is that. Cerulean blue. I'm going to use cerulean blue for this little guy. So I'm going to wet him first just to make sure the paper's nice and damp. I will leave little snippets, or I can go back in with gouache anyway, if I want to add in little bits of white towards the end. I'll just wash these down first. I might do that. I might just add gouache later on just over the top, just to bring back some of the lights. And I'm going to drop in this blue and let it flow. And I can actually leave the lighter parts 
I won't, I just won't, I'll just do that and I'll add dots of pigment. But you can see I'm just leaving little tiny bits of white paper here and there. Not going to too much fuss. Let that flow over the whole bird. The other one's green. So it's a little bit different. Oh, yellow and green rather. So that's really diluted, very, very watered down. And I've dropped wet diluted paint onto wet paper. And that really keeps it nice and soft and not too heavy looking. Take that right down to the bottom of the tail and make that tail longer because I can. There we go. All right, I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to mix up a yellowy green. So I'm actually going to go green gold. I've got a little bit of green gold and I'm going to add some yellow to it. Um, so just to make it much more yellowy than greeny. First thing I'm going to do straight away is wet the budgie. Oops, I've got yellow pigment on my brush. So I'm going to wet the budgie, budgie all over with a damp brush, the whole budgie. As you can see, like I did on that one, I've left little snips of white paper. So, but I'll still wet the whole paper like that. Come right down here. I'll make his tail a little bit longer. And then I'm going to drop in the yellowy green pigment like that and just let it flow. And I can add some stronger tones over the top because you can add dark colours over the top. Hello, Shane. How are you going, Dale? So you can add dark colours over the top. Um, you can't, if you've got gouache, you can add lights back, but. How are you going, Shane? So I'll just pop this on while it's still wet. Get that on there. Like that. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit. So that's just wet into wet. So wet paint, really diluted on to wet paper. Blue one's not quite dry. I'm going to add, I'll do the stem that they're sitting on and I'm going to use yellow ochre. But the same thing, I'm going to wet the stem. Oop, I've got paint on my brush. I need to clean my brushes a little bit better. Wet the stem, staying away from the blue and the yellow just a little bit so it doesn't all run in. Get my yellow ochre and just drop that quite thick. That's less water, more pigment for that. And I'll take that around the stem that they're sitting on, the little perch. And I'm also, while that's still damp, going to add a little bit of burn umber, just a touch under here, under their little toes. Because while that's still damp, it will flow in a little bit and look a little bit more natural. I'll add some shadow tones later, but this is just to get the base sort of drawing in and just filled with colour. So, all good. Have a sip of me coffee. <laughs> Whoops, got to get my, my doodah out the way. There we go. Okie doke. So, now, their little beaks, uh, well, they've got little, they're little boys, so they've got blue on the, the top part of their beak. Little boys have blue tops of their beak up here, their nostrils, and little girls have pink, which is really cool. It's very cute. So, I'll make them, I will make them both little boy budgies, because I want to, just because I can. And for the first layer, that's just a very slight watered down just what I already had on the palette, blue pigment. Their beaks, great colour. If you get come across it, it is called, I've gone completely blank on what it's called. Hang on, hold that thought and it'll come, it'll come to me. Um, maybe it won't, hang on. Where's my paint gone? What's it called? I never remember the name of this paint, but it is awesome colour. Oh, Buff Titanium, brilliant stuff. Good, thanks, been an, been an evening catching up with a secret Santa program from Idaho. Oh, news. Idaho news. Cool, I meant to say. Not news. <laughs> Very cool indeedly. So I'm adding buff titanium. Oh, my digger's donging, isn't it? You can hear bips in the background. I apologise for that. And I'm going to add the buff titanium to both of their beaks. Because it is a perfect beak colour. I will add shadows to it as well. As I go. I'm just going to block it. I'm just blocking in at the moment. 
just blocking everything in, getting it all onto paper like that. I'm going to give them a background, no idea what or how. <laughs> So yeah, we'll just go with the flow, eh? Let's do that. And I'm going to use different blues. So I'm going to use my ultramarine. Get a bit of that on me thing. And I'm going to start to strengthen. He's got darker blue blobs. These bits here are lovely and dark. These little colour marks. Like that. He's got darker under his wing. I've got to dilute that a little bit more. So when I say dilute that, I wet my brush, pop a little bit more water in, more water into the mix just to make it a slight, a couple of tones lighter. I had it a little bit thick. The more water you add, the paler the colour will come, become on the paper. The less it will be less strong. So if you want a strong colour, you don't add as much water. If you want a weak colour or weaker, you add more water. And I do that. I, I use a lot of water and I build up lots of layers. And it's just finding the style that you like to find, like, that you like to do personally. So now he's got, a, he's got a little bit more dark under there. Right, I've got to be careful here. Now he's got lots of grey on him. He's got lots of grey in amongst his feathers. But for this second, I'm just going to use blues. And I'm going to let that dry. On that little bird I'll let him dry and I'll go back to my little yellow dude over here because he's more green than yellow and I'm gonna go in with my Aussie green gold which is my art spectrum color it needs to be a bit more green so I'm gonna add a bit more a bit more a bit more citrusy looking so, there we go so whoop, I just hit my head on the camera sorry about that guys that's probably not quite rich enough green, but it's all right for a base colour. So I'm just going to leave those little snippets of white because they'll be dark. They're actually darker, but I'm leaving them light for now. I'm going to add this in. Not all over, not completely over, just in shadowy areas. Help to define these little leggy bits and I'm going to wet that and drag. So when I don't want a hard line, so all I do is I clean my brush. And I drag that edge of the paint while it's still wet. I move the edge of the paint around that I've already put on the paper. And that disperses it so you don't end up with hard lines. And it's all You've got to try and do it while the paint's still wet. Um, like So I put it on the paper and then I clean my brush, damp the edges and soften the edges. Like that. Okay, there's a secret sand who's giving out a million dollars to people in need. Wow, that's a bit special. That's very special. That's very special indeed. All right, so I'm going to do under that wing. Okay, so now I'm going to soft, clean my brush, wet it, and drag that paint right around like that. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone for a second. Let that bit dry and I can go back up here onto his little face and I'm going to go in with me ultramarine because this yellow up here is dry and I'm going to start to mark his little face markings on. I've got to be a bit careful. I don't want to get this into that, oh, yeah, that yellowy green. Oh, I've got it a little bit there but it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so pop his little markings on. Cool, okay. But now I'm going to go in with a much more vibrant green. What am I going to use? Hmm, I reckon phthalo. Let's go phthalo green. Yeah, that's a lovely green. That's very limey. And while this other green is yellowy green is still wet, I'm going to pop this around and let it flow. Just like this. And down under his tail, cutting around his feet a little bit. That sticks dry now that they're sitting on, so that's all good. Anywhere that he needs this sort of stronger green, just down here. And you can see it flows where I've put it already. It flows along where there's already water. The water carries it. Okay, I've got to be a bit careful here and just drag out these edges. 
or I'll let that dry and then I'll do a wash over the top. And, I'll, and any excess, you just absorb the, the water in your brush and you can pick up the water. If there's too much water on the paper, you just take the moisture out of your brush, touch it into the blob of water and it'll absorb back up the brush again so you don't end up with um, pools of water on your page. So I'm just dragging out the edges now, like that. Okay, I'll leave that alone for a second. Got to let those dry and I'm going to add their little eyeballs. So for his eyeballs, I'm going to go, ultra, I'm going to make a grey out of ultramarine blue. Work, come here, ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber makes a great, lovely, natural sort of blue grey. A lovely dark colour if you need a dark colour. And I'm going to pop that in. It's a beautiful natural blue grey to the eyeball, to the pupil. And I'm going to do that on both the little dudes. Like that. And this is also the grey that I'm going to use on the wings. There we go. They've both got eyeballs. Woohoo! Look at that. <laughs> okay. So... Now I'm going to use that same grey, but I'm going to mix up a bit more of it. So it's burnt umber, burnt umber, and ultramarine to make a lovely brownie grey, like that. And it's quite diluted. I'll do it thicker. That's dry. I just had to touch it to make sure it's dry. And I'm going to start to add the little colours that they've got on their feathers, they've got ripple patterns, like little, little ripply patterns on their little faces. But I'm just using the very, very tip of my brush and very, very softly over the top, like that. And he's starting to look like a budgie, that's always a good thing. Okay, now... I take this grey around his wings and all of these feathers. I'll leave little gaps so I don't fill it in completely. How's my summer? Oh my God, Shane, it's been hot. <laughs> it's only just started. Like it's been summer for about a week. And we had, this week we had 36 degrees and rain, which is a hundred and something 103 I think um, and rain at the same time it was it's been weird today's much cooler today's only mid-20s which is I don't know what that is that's 80s I suppose in Celsius and and, and showers <laughs> it's been very tropical so I'm just gonna add I'm, I'm just doing basic shapes you don't have to be the, the beauty with watercolor is you don't have to have exacting detail. It's nice to be a little bit freer, a little bit looser, and have a bit more fun with it. Be a bit more expressive, I think, is the word that I'm looking for. You can be more expressive with watercolour. It's less sort of perfect. Everything's not quite perfect. It's, it's more expression. You put your little bit of personality into your work. So I just take that down onto the the long feathers and I've got to take these grey feathers down his back as well like that and onto there and I've got to add a couple of darker tones so darker greys so all I'll do for the darker greys is exactly the same pigments so red, uh, burnt umber ultramarine blue but the only difference is I'll add less water which will make it a stronger tone a darker colour there we go so that's pretty much him blocked in. And I'll do the same on the little bit little green dude. Um, actually, I've got, um, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to keep going on this blue guy. I'm going to go more burnt umber, more ultramarine, and now it's less water, and you'll see the difference. See how much stronger that is? That's just less water in the mix. And it goes a darker grey. And I'm going to add that over the top, leaving, you can see the under feathers. I 
I'm leaving it so you can still see the other grey. There we go. Take that right down and around like that. And these feathers, you can see they're over the back. They cross over underneath like that. So he's got a little crissy crossy bit. And then I just blop those in like that. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm not, I need to fix, um, I've got to add some more in here. I've got to darken up these little ones on his head too, just around his eye. And just using the very tip of the brush, and I'm using a size 8, um, silver black velvet, they're my fave. They're wonderful brushes. And they're quite affordable, I think. They are affordable here, which is always a good thing. Okay, okay, there we go. I'll add a few different blues in as well. I'm going to clean my brush, go back and go to a dark green. I'm going to go to an olive. I'm just going to go to a pre-mixed olive. It's a lovely olive green because this green guy has got a few different greens on him. And I'm going to add his wing colours. And I'll add dark. I can add a bit more blue to that. A bit of indigo will help darken that up as well. And I'm going to take that down. Whoops, still quite wet, but that's okay. I can drag that out into the shadow areas underneath his wings. Hello, Anthony! Stopping by, say hello, enjoyed the sharks. Oh, thank you! Yeah, they were lots of fun. I'm glad you liked. Yeah, I popped into your stream. I don't know whether it was this morning or yesterday, you were doing um, a seascape. I popped in and hung out for a while. I didn't say anything. I was just quiet in the background, just enjoying your lovely melodic voice and your lovely work. But yeah, I hung out for a while. <laughs> but I was having a quiet day. <laughs> so I was just, just lurking in the background. But I was there watching your magical work. Anyone in chat, if you haven't met Grayscale? You need to pop over and check out his work. He does magical, magical work. Gorgeous art. Okay. And it's grayscale painting. Okay, so I'm just adding the darker tones here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a little bit because as you can see, it was still a little bit wet. Just a little bit. I've got to, I've got to actually, I do have to darken up, get that olive green, more pure pigment. Just onto this part of his little bot bot near his foot. Pop his little wing like that. There we go. And then, is it Shark Week there? It's Shark Week here. That's why I got all inspired about sharks. Because I love sharks. But yeah, it's Shark Week and I've been watching all the documentaries. <laughs> um... All right, and he's got the same thing, but he's got green lines going around his little face. And this is a really quite a simple, fast, like this has taken me 28 minutes from start to finish to this point. I will turn this into a time lapse too. Um, for anyone who's not really wanting to sit around and see the whole process, but I will turn this into a time lapse for you as well. It was Giant commission, not done yet, but thank you. You're not the only one who was lurking around here. <laughs> the world is full of lurkers. The world is full of lurkers. Berserker lurkers. Now, I need to look at my thing, and I need to pick a background colour. So, I've got... I can probably go with a violet, because yellows... Oh, I can't really. Maybe I won't do a background. I'm just trying to think, because I've got to do something that's... Shark Week, come and gone. Oh, okay, it's this week here. That's why I thought I was all inspired. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little touch of yellow to his face. On both of their faces, actually. Just a tiny touch. Yeah, so I've been on document shark documentary overload and absolutely loving it. <laughs> um, right, now I've got to add... A little bit more of this, I keep hitting my head on the camera, a little bit more of this grey around his eye. 
like that. And I need to darken up the eye a lot, lot more. His pupils, I need them to stand out. I'm just going to add a little bit of grey under his beak. Same with this little guy. A little bit of grey there. Okay. Looking cute. Looking cute. Have another sip of my coffee before it goes cold. Now... Um, I'm going to go a little bit of indigo, because why not, which is a very beautiful blue, and I'm going to strengthen up, less, not so diluted, so there's less water, more pigment, and I'm just going to take that into the darker areas on this beautiful blue budge, because he's got darker tail feathers. Got to be a bit brave and strengthen these colours. Take that right down his tail, right down the length of his tail, and I'm going to wet my brush and just drag that edge out a little bit. And then do the other side, because the other side is the same, but you can only see the bits of them like that. Like that. I'm going to strengthen up these dots, and I'm going to add a little of this, a little of this into the bottom parts of these feathers. Not completely over them, but just to make it look more unified. Take it down onto his belly. And then I'm going to, that bit I am actually going to dilute a little bit. So I wet my brush and drag it out a fraction. And down the front of his little leg. Like that. Ta-da! Just like that. Got to darken up under that wing a little bit. Strengthen the colour, not more, more, not darken so much as strengthen the colour. And now for the beak, because I used whatever colour that was, what colour did I use? I used uh, buff titanium. So I'm going to use a bit more buff titanium, but I'm going to add a little bit of brown to a bit, a little bit of a darker brown, just to mix in. I've got too much water on my brush, peeps. Get let get the water off my brush. Get a bit of buff titanium, a bit of burnt umber, and that makes a creamy sort of a brown colour, which is really good just to create different tones on the beak. So that's buff titanium with a little bit of umber, burnt umber. And I'm just popping that around the edges of the beak. Just gives it a little bit more sort of dimension. Pop. I'm also going to use that type buff titanium on the legs. And I can see two toes at the back. And on this one, I can actually see two toes at the front. So they're both sitting differently. So his little legs are like that. There we go. Oakley doke. And I'm also going to use this little buff titanium just around just that part of his eye. Just like that. A little bit there. What colour am I going to do the background, peeps? I've got no idea. They sort of need, they're floating around in space. They need something. I'll think of something. I'm going to add a bit of orange to this green guy. Because he just, because you can see little snippets of colour sort of popping through. And it just keeps him a little bit interesting. I like to go, I go mad with colours. <laughs> I tend to, tend to pop all kinds of colours in everywhere, because why not? So I'm just going to pop a little bit of orange in, just to lift it a little bit, because you can see the yellows and the oranges showing through on his, and you know, he's got reflections of the sun coming up on his little chest. He's quite lovely, I like all the colours. Budgies come in so many amazing colours. They really do. Um, we used to have purple ones, blue ones. The wild ones are mainly blue, blues and greens, but you can, yeah, you can breed all different colours. So there's mauves and pinky colours and gorgeous they are. So I'm just going to add this around his little face and I'll dilute it down a little bit there, but it just gives him a little bit more dimension. Wet my, clean and wet my brush and I'm just going to drag this out at the edges because I don't want the hard lines. I want it to look like it's just shining through his little feathers. So I'll just literally just drag that around, soften those edges while it's still wet. 
same on his little face. All right, and I'll add a bit more green there too. Just to strengthen that up a little bit and that'll blend with that yellow. That'll be fine, that orangey colour. There we go. Now, okay, I'm having a look at my big screen to see how it's looking. It's looking pretty good. Right, background. What on, what on earth am I going to do for the background? So I'm looking at my colour wheel and I might go a mauve because there's lots of greens. I could go a ready mauve or a per or yeah, ready, ready mauve maybe. It's very unnatural. Hmm. But I don't mind it actually. I've decided I'm going a ready mauve. Let's have a look at my palettes that I've got. I'm going to go permanent magenta for a background. We'll see how this works, eh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush thoroughly. Clean my brush very thoroughly. And I'm going to wet the whole background. Anywhere that I want this magenta colour, I'm going to wet with my brush. And this is uh, Archer's watercolour paper, hot uh, cold press, so it's rough grained. So hot press is smooth and cold press is grained. And you can get all different medium rough and all that sort of stuff. I've got I've got medium to rough. Um, depends on the day. This is sort of yeah, this is not a, a strong big grain, but it takes the paint, it takes the carries the watercolour easier and I just find, I do, I do a lot on, on hot press, which is a smooth paper, especially with animals, but I'm having fun with the rough paper at the moment. It does seem to, whoops, I've got to be a bit careful, because if I get this onto the bits that are wet, the previously painted parts, it will suck the paint into the water and move the paint where I don't want it. So I'm just making sure the background's all nice and wet. I'm not going to do the whole background to the edges. I'm just going to run that in and around. I'll do it quite a soft background. All right, so I've got the background pretty well wet. And I'm, if I tilt my head on the side, I can see the sheen on the paper. Now I'm going to drop in the magenta and let it flow. And just let it do its thing what watercolour does best. And I've made sure I've got a lot of magenta on my palette. It's this permanent magenta. And I'm going to take that right around and let it be. Just let it flow. And it won't go anywhere I haven't put water. It will only go onto the wet areas, which is a wonderful thing. So if I haven't got it onto the bird, it won't go onto the bird. There we go. Actually, I quite like that. That's working out okay. I'm quite happy with that for a background colour. Quite happy with that indeed. I've just got to work quickly while the paper's still wet. Because once the paper dries out, it will stop flowing. And I'll end up with hard lines, which I do not want. There we go. Look at that. Lovely. Take that right around the edge of that budgie. Like that. And it's almost in a heart shape, isn't it? That was accidental. So now I'm just going to work in a little bit closer to the budgies, just taking that paint closer to the edges. Being careful not to get it on the birds. But I don't want but I want it to be. While it's still damp, I can move that paint into the edges. Get right in close to both the little birds. Like that. I'll do it on this one as well. And it makes them stand out a little bit more, I think. It really helps with their... Um, make it contrast. That's the word I'm looking for. It helps with contrast and making them stand out. Let's go under his little leggies. Get under that stick or perch. There we go. So, there you go, peeps. That is a very simple, very quick painting of budgies. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so, so much for watching. 
And I will pop back for another stream at the next available opportunity that I get. Because <laughs> life is busy. Life is busy and crazy. But I was looking forward to hanging out with you guys and creating an another video. So, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Oakley Doke, have an awesome one. <laughs> Bye.